Well, good morning. My name is Pastor Ricardo. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. What an exciting day that we can just all of us come together and worship our King in heaven. Uh, I just have a couple of announcements that I want to highlight. The first one is that we're starting with a new series. It's called I'm Mad. It's making a difference. And we have an opportunity for us to make a difference. And it's by serving. And we're going to have a, an opportunity for us to uh, go into Miami First Church of the Nazarene on August 8th. And we're going to have a, a, a chance for us to do some work uh, for God's kingdom. And I hope you can join us on, on that day. Also, I want to encourage you that um, we have um, a few adult groups that you guys can join in. We have one on Monday. We have one on Tuesdays. And we also have one on Thursdays, which Sandy Abbott is our group leader. And not only is she a group leader, but she's also in charge of all the three groups. And she does an amazing job um, at that. So make sure you um, go to Miami.RenewChurch and um, look her up and give her a text if you're interested in being part of these small groups. Also, we have uh, groups for um, teenagers. And if you're in um, sixth grade all the way up to senior high, man, make sure you um, uh, look up Misfit. Uh, they're a, an amazing uh, youth group. And also, I want to share with you that we're going to also have an event for the RC Kids. And we're going to have a, a Zoom bingo day. And it's on August 16th at 1 p.m. And if we want you to please uh, do us a favor in RSVP um, at Miami.RenewChurch. So that way you can get the link to the, um, to the Zoom. Okay. Also, we have a 21 day of prayer and fasting on August 9th all the way through the 29th. And we're going to be praying for our government. We're going to be praying for our schools. So make sure you uh, just take a little, take a break from the biz business of life and uh, make sure you're fasting uh, on those days. Safety, community, worship. That's what you can expect at Renew Church's drive-in service. You can sing the songs and listen to the message from the comfort of your own vehicle. You can enjoy the company of some familiar faces and new ones in a non-contact way. And lastly, you can worship Jesus in the way that we're supposed to, together. So come join us for our next drive-in church service. For more info, check out www.renew.miami. Man, I hope you join us uh, next Sunday for our drive-in service at 5 p.m. Man, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be super exciting. Now, as we prepare to worship our King in heaven, man, I want to uh, share with you a story uh, from the Bible. And it begins, in, it begins in Genesis chapter 12. And it talks about Abraham. Abraham is 75 years old. And he's got a great life. He's got a great family. He's got, you know people that know who he is, man, he, you know, he's comfortable. And then we see that God calls Abraham. He says, Abraham, come over here. I want you to go to this, to travel to this land where I'm going to show you. But guess what? God never sh reveals his final destination. All God tells him is to go. You know that he became the father of all nations. And here's what I, I want you to get is that the blessings of God will always follow obedience. Let me say that again. The blessings of God always follows obedience. In other words, if you obey, then God will bless you. And there, and there are many times in our lives that we say, you know what? Maybe today I'm not going to give because I'm waiting for a promotion. Or maybe there are some of you that are, that are saying, you know what? I'm waiting for that raise so that I can be obedient. But that's not the way it works. The way we obey God is during difficult times. It's during tough times. It's during times that we are uncomfortable. That's how Christianity and faith works. Amen? Let me pray with you uh, this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you 
that you love us. We thank you that you are so good to us. God, I pray that as we give a portion back to you, God, that we will be obedient to what you have called us uh, to be. We love you and we thank you, God, for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, till I am a soul on fire, Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day, when I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire, Out of the ashes we rise 
Thank you so much for watching. My name is Pastor Trevor, and I am so glad that you've taken some time out of your day to participate with us, to watch this service, to be in this series that we started called I'm Mad. Let us know where you're watching from. This is an interactive service, so we would love to hear from you. We'd love you to engage with us in the chat. Even take a moment if you're watching on Facebook and share and let some people know uh, that you're watching Renew Church Online. If you're watching at Church Online through our website, man, uh, you can even click the link that's there in the chat and invite somebody. You can text the link to somebody else, let them know. In fact, we had somebody watching from Orlando, and they texted somebody here in Miami. And that person had watched, and, and they hadn't been to our church in, in many, many months. And in fact, they were affected with the virus. And I had the opportunity that evening, because they watched the service, uh, to pray with them. So you never know the impact you'll have just by clicking the share button. We'd love for you to participate with us in that. Well, again, uh, this is a brand new series. It starts 
today, and it will continue through the month of August, and it's called I'm Mad. How many, how many of you get mad and, and, and let us know, even in the comments, like, what are the things that have really, like, gotten you mad? What was the last thing that has really made you mad? Like, I mean, like, really mad. What might it have been? If you want to share that in the chat, we'd love to hear from you uh, on that. I was talking to my daughter on the way here about that, and, and I said, honey, what, what's the last thing that you, like, remember me getting mad about? And she's like, dad, you get mad every day. I know, you guys are like, no way, Pastor Trevor gets mad, but isn't it funny that with our own kids, we, we get the maddest, and, and we seem to like have the least amount of patience with uh, those people, but you know, I get mad sometimes, I, I get mad when I'm you know, feeling like somebody's trying to take advantage of me, or, or get one over on, on me, I, like this one's weird, but sometimes when I go to Disney World, I'm reminiscing because I haven't been to Disney World in a long time, obviously, with everything going on. But have you ever been in one of those rides where it's one of the, the, the lines where it's kind of the, the wide line, not the little uh, lines, but it's, it's like the, the Little Mermaid ride or the Frozen ride. And it's got these wide lines and, and there are people that, that they're just so impatient when the, the line scoots up a little bit, they're literally like pushing you up to the point where you almost kind of feel like you're an indie car racer having to hold the corners because the person in front of you is trying to cut you. I know that sounds crazy, but it's the happiest place on earth and sometimes I get a little bit mad there. I get mad when my daughters let the trash pile up. That's one of their very few chores that they're supposed to be responsible for. I get mad when my dog tries to come to move from the foot of the bed up to the head of the bed where I am and gets close to my pillow. I don't like that. I know some of you are like, why is the dog on the bed? Ask my wife that question. I get mad when my wife doesn't tell me I have a piece of food in my teeth and I just got through smiling at people because I have those kind of teeth, I guess. I don't know. I get mad, and this happened just this week, when my water bill went up by $160 why? Because I wasn't paying attention to a running toilet in my house and the three-month bill came out and it was double the price of what it normally is. But that's not what really makes me mad. I mean, what really makes me mad is going to the store and not knowing how to interact with people, not knowing how to like even make an uh, uh, eye contact with people. And what makes me mad is, is feeling like I'm the pastor at a church and more than just at a church, I'm a pastor to a community of people and, and I feel like sometimes I'm not really pastoring them. I feel like that uh, my hands are tied. I feel like I'm not really making a difference. You know, I'm called to be the light of the world. I'm called to be the salt of the earth. I'm called to be a fisher of men. And I'm sometimes saying, am I really even doing that? I want to take you today to a, a, a passage in Luke, Luke chapter 5. And in Luke chapter 5, it's this story of uh, Jesus in this amazing, miraculous healing. Let me read it to you, and then, then I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more of the background on it. Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 17. One day, Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. And they had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus, the Lord Jesus, to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, and they tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. And when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and they lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can for forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and he went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. 
They were filled with awe. And they said, we have seen remarkable things today. I want to give you a little bit of background to this story. This is our primary text today. But here's, here's some, some things that you need to know about this. This is Peter's town. This is Peter's hometown. This is Capernaum. In fact, that home that they're in, some commentators think that that might even be Peter's house where his mother lived. And, and there was lots of people in the house. There were a lot of people from all over the region that were there in the yard, in the house, just crowded around. And these were people that, that came more because they were spectating, more because they had heard about Jesus. And they were like spectators, but they were not just any kind of spectators. They were skeptical spectators. It's hard to say, skeptical spectators. They had heard about how Jesus just a few days earlier had healed a leper. And there had never been a recorded healing of a leper. A leper and, and leprosy was incurable. So these people said, you know what? There's something about this Jesus. And the healing of a, a, a leper man, leprous person was a sign of the Messiah. It was one of the messianic signs. And people wanted to see who this unconventional rabbi was. They wanted to, to know who this guy was that had called a bunch of fishermen and tax collectors to be his disciples. They had to find out if this guy was the real deal and if he could really do the things that they heard that he could do. So, there's a crowd. Jesus is in the house. Maybe it's Peter's house, maybe it's not, but there's a crowd gathered around. I want you to put yourself right there in that place. Put yourself right into the text. And I, I know what you're thinking. You're putting yourself in the text, but you're putting yourself in the text of the story of those four men. You're probably thinking you're one of those four guys grabbing the one of the four corners of the man's mat and saying, yep, that's what I would have done. But let me just remind you, come back to reality for a second. I don't know that you would have done that because I don't know that I would have done that. I don't know of anybody that would have really done that. Like literally, you would have taken a guy that was paralyzed up 15, maybe 20 feet into the air on top of a roof. So in other words, it's a dangerous, slanted, sloping area. Tear a hole in it and lower this guy down to where Jesus was, hoping maybe that by doing so that Jesus could lay his hands on him, say a word to him, or heal him. That would have been you? Let me ask you, like, what if he didn't do that? You, you would be the guy or one of the four guys in town known as the idiot that carried a paralyzed guy onto a roof and then dropped him through the ceiling so that everybody would laugh and look and say, look what he did to a guy that couldn't do anything for him. All for nothing. At least that's what I would have done. If I'm honest, I think I would have been the guy in the crowd. If I'm honest, I think I would have been the guy like just, just like wanting to see what Jesus was going to do next. And in the crowd, maybe I would have seen behind me there uh, uh, a few men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. And nobody's making way for him. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Nobody else is moving for him. And I don't want to lose my spot. So um, I'll just stay where I am. Because he's not going to get to Jesus. And so I would just wait and see what happens next. I want to put you, I, I want you to put yourself in, in, in not just that person's perspective. I want to put you in the perspective of the paralyzed man for just a moment. Here he is. He's paralyzed. He hasn't moved in, in years, decades, maybe since birth. Some of your, your set subheadings in the Bible say that these were his four friends, but there, there are other uh, you know people that have, have said maybe they weren't even his friends. Like this man, he lived in a harsh world just like you and I do. And people are so judgmental, and especially religious people. Because if you're physically disabled, it's not just you're physically disabled. It's because you sinned or your parents sinned or because God is angry at you. So this guy, this paralyzed man, is literally in a position, he's in a place where he doesn't want to be seen. He doesn't want to go out in public. He doesn't want to draw attention to himself. This is a really, really tough place to be. 
And if you're in the house, you're actually, you're, you're one of those people that are blocking those four men and that paralyzed man from getting to Jesus. Let me, let me just point something out about this. If you're in that position, if you're standing in that house, if you're waiting and watching to see what Jesus does, you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And I think that that's what applies to us in this season. I think that that's what happens in our lives during this time of uh, 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 in, in our world today. Like, we have a crazy opportunity in front of us. A crazy opportunity in our world today to, to do something or to do nothing. With all kinds of explanations and excuses to say, you know what? We shouldn't do anything at all. There's nothing we can do. But this is that opportunity when if there's a need, if there's an opportunity to make a difference, man, I don't want to be the person standing in the way of getting somebody to Jesus. And it may be just that one person that has been waiting their entire life to have an interaction, to have an encounter, to be able to hear the words of Jesus or get the touch from Jesus that may change that person's life. In a season like this, at a time like this, I, I think that, that we have those two options. We have the option of getting in the way, blocking people from Jesus, or being a part of the solution and sending people and taking people to Jesus. There's people in our church that are doing that very thing. There are people in, in, in our, uh, uh, at Renew that, that have done some things on their own without any initiative from anybody else. But one example is a, a mom in our church that got COVID-19, her and her husband, and and, and uh, put it out there that, hey, we're, we're uh, going through this. Please be in prayer for us. Be in prayer for our family. It's a tough time. And another mom heard about it. She got her number. She didn't even know her. She just saw it through, the, through, through some of our chats and communications. And she said, you know, I know that, that there's this mom on the other side of town and she has the virus and I can't imagine what that must be like. I, I just want to find out how I can help. And so I just connected the two put them together on, on a text message, and they started interacting. And uh, they had never really known each other. They, they knew of each other, but they didn't even know what each other looked like. But one of them said, you know, the one with that, that had uh, contracted the virus said, you know, it would be great if we had some, some groceries or if we had some help. And so sure enough, this, this other mom said, I want to do that. And she went to the store and she bought all kinds of products for them and, and then some extra things and, and uh, took them to their house, left them on the front door and went home. Never to know what would happen, never to know anything else about it, never to expect anything in return. A few weeks later, she gets, a, uh, she gets on one of our Zoom fellowships, one of our, our gatherings after, after church. And she's on there and she's reporting about how somebody brought her... Uh, uh, groceries and how it helped them so much and how it even helped her 20 year old son who was uh, uh, questioning his faith and doubting uh, you know where God is and all of this to say you know what I think I want to be a part of a church and all of a sudden up pops the other mom on the screen she wasn't there earlier and then they they realize oh you are so and so Oh, you're the one that I was able to help. And these two ladies had this unbelievable reunion with tears flowing in the midst of our Zoom. And we just got to be witnesses of it. We just got to sit on the sideline and say, wow, look what the Lord has done. I'm telling you today, as a church, we've got to get mad. We've got to, got to be those kind of people that are saying, I'm going to make a difference. I know that I'm wearing the I'm Mad shirt. That's the theme for the series. That's what we're doing this, this coming week. But I really want us to begin to be just like this mom in this story. There's another story of a couple from New Mexico 
They, they're a part of our church, faithfully attending and, and being online, as well as attending through, through our Zoom groups on Tuesday nights. And, and uh, they heard about an elderly couple in our church, found out that there were certain supplies that you can't get in Miami that are hard to get a hold of, certain things that, that are, are uh, either are hard to get or just really expensive. And they had them where they were in New Mexico. So this couple spent over $100 to buy and ship supplies to that elderly couple's home. Man, I'm telling you, that's what it's about. That's what making a difference is all about. That's what getting mad is all about. Another family that lost their father during this COVID season. It was sudden. They they weren't prepared for it. And you know, as as with everything, this this, uh, COVID thing has made it hard to go to the hospital. It's made it hard to, to have funerals. And it's put a lot of pressure financially on people. People connected to our church heard about the need. They heard about the situation and they gave a significant amount of money to help with those funeral costs. Man, I'm talking about not sitting on the sidelines. I'm talking about not blocking people from getting to Jesus. I'm talking about being one of those people that would say, even if it means I've got to tear the roof off this house, I'm going to get somebody to Jesus. That's where we go with this message today. That's where I take you with this this sermon that that starts this series today. That I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you to get mad. I want to challenge you to begin to make a difference. And it starts even this next weekend, this Saturday, August the 8th. We're going to be doing a, a, a mad serve day with some awesome opportunities for you to get a little bit dirty, for you to get a little bit sweaty, or if that's not your thing, if construction and cleanup's not your thing, then maybe another opportunity is just to love on some people from a distance. Proper uh, you know, uh, PPEs and social distancing and everything in place, but opportunities for you to make a difference. We've got two different teams, uh, one that's helping with construction and cleanup and helping another church that's, uh, that's, that's needing some help with some of their, their uh, property and, and uh, doing some, some uh, uh, demolition and some landscaping. But then there's also a group of people led by uh, Linda Robles that are going to be doing some outreach in the community and, and uh, just connecting with the neighbors and maybe handing out some flyers and maybe serving some people in our community. It's happening this weekend, August the 8th, 8.30 to noon, and I would love it if you'd be a part of it. I'd love it if you'd get mad and be a part of our Mad Serve Days. You'll get a t-shirt. You'll get one of these Mad shirts. We'll provide all the refreshments. We'll provide gloves and goggles. If you have those, bring them. If you have tools that you want to use, if you're going to help with some of the construction, bring that stuff. But we would love it if you would be a part of our Mad Serve opportunities. There's going to be some great things happening in the days ahead, the weeks ahead. Uh, in fact, In addition to that, Pastor Ricardo alluded to it, but uh, this is the time of year when we've got to do something even beyond what we would normally do. Normally in August, we wouldn't be doing a prayer and fasting season, but this isn't a normal season. As we start back to the school year and as kids and teachers and everybody's trying to find some kind of a normalcy, it's not a normal time, especially here in Miami, but we've got to do something about that. And so we're going to begin a time of prayer and fasting. So if you want to make a difference, join us at the Mad Serve Day, but also join us from August the 9th through August the 29th for a time of prayer and fasting. Maybe you give up one meal a day. Maybe you give up a certain type of food. There's others that would give up social media. There's others that would would consider um, a certain forms of entertainment that are just a distraction from your relationship with the Lord. Whatever that thing is that will help you to be able to focus in to take some time to be uh, present with God and uh, not distracted by the things of the world and the things that are going on in life. Let's do those things together. As a church, we're going to be doing that and we'll be providing some um, regular devotionals and uh, ways that you can interact in that uh, as we pray and fast together. Here's the thought. Here's the, the, the main thing that I want you to take away from today's message. In order to make a difference... You've got to be different. In order to make a difference, you've got to be different. You know 
that those four men were different than everybody else. They weren't the spectators. They weren't the skeptics. They knew that Jesus had something that their friend or this man needed. And they said, we're going to get him to Jesus no matter what it is. To make the difference, they had to be different. For you, you've got to be different. Everybody, the whole world is going through COVID-19. The whole world is dealing with all of the, 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 the situations that we're in. But here and now, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging anybody within the sound of my voice, those that are a part of Renew Church or even maybe hearing it for the first time. It's time for you to stand up and say, I'm going to be different. I'm going to make a difference. I'm super excited about what God's doing in our church. I'm super excited about what God is doing in, in, in our city. And it's through you. It's God using you. So what are you fighting for? What are you going to do? Let's start to make a difference. Can you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for this opportunity to, to gather in this place uh, uh, with people in, on screens all over the city, but actually even around the world. God, I know there are people watching even from other parts of the world, and I'm just praying, God, that you would help us to be different, to get mad, and in that, to really say, I want to do something for that person that's far from Jesus to bring them to Jesus. God, I pray that you would help me to be that kind of person, that kind of pastor. Lord, I, I, I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines. I'm tired of waiting. And, and not that I'm trying to create any kind of uh, tension. I want to do it in the right way and in the right order and protecting those that, that I'm interacting with. But God, I know that there are some things that I can do to bring people to Jesus here and now. Even in the, in the end of this message, maybe today for you, this may be a message that's calling you to say, I want to be different. And that very first step is making that declaration, Lord Jesus, you are Lord of my life. Lord Jesus, I want you to come and forgive me of my sins. I want you to, to uh, save me. And right here and right now, I'm declaring that I am your son or your daughter, and I choose to follow you all the days of my life. It's a simple prayer. It's called the prayer of salvation, and it's the prayer that saves, not because of any amount of work that you do, not because of the amount of Bible reading that you do or praying that you do. It's one prayer of faith. We're saved by grace through faith that just says, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Come into my life. Save me and make me a brand new person. And it's by grace because of God's grace. And through our faith, man, we can be saved. That's the first thing that you want to do. If you want to be different, you got to start with that. Man, I hope that you'll join us this weekend for our Mad Serve Day. More information will come through our, uh, our emails and through uh, social media in different ways. But we would love to see you 8.30, August the 8th, Miami First Church for that very first Mad Day. It's going to be a great time. God bless you. Have an amazing week.